This is the Dave and Shecky Show. We got this groovy podcast for ya. Reviewing crazy tunes or quoting Twain and Sting and Doom. We'll bring ideas to share like bonus points for extra flair. Cause it's the freaking Dave and Shecky Show. Shecky Show, we're bringing you this groovy review. We might preview movies, bake some bread, or drink some smoothies. So come on, have way too much caffeine. You roll up some rivers, I'll reference some Raffi. This is the Dave and Shecky Show. Hero. Hi, and welcome to, it's episode four. Did you know that? Uh, yeah. Episode four. Quattro. Of what, though, <laughs> is the question. <laughs> Uh, of the podcast. <laughs> you know what? That was such a flash in the pan on SNL that I'm I'm quite certain nobody nobody <laughs> recalls that bit. What? You're not a big fan of uh, the people who made uh, So I Married an Axe Murderer? I, are you kidding me? That was one of the first things I asked you when we started dating. I don't know if you remember that. Shush, I remember that. Okay. I also remember you said never say shush. That's why I've said it twice. <laughs> I don't I don't remember saying that, but I I believe that I probably did. Okay, Dave, you've started this. I was making some uh <laughs> yeah, noises. Don't make that noise. The Clearly dog the dog doesn't seem to like to it. That was for her. No, honey. Honey, go lay down, sweet girl. It's okay. Shh. No, honey. So uh yeah. Anyway, so uh I'll cut that part out. Shush, how about the uh <laughs> How about the gong show? Coming back. Bringing it back. Bringing taking it, it back. Br- Dave, I have asked you now what the name of the show was, and you have just gone on to... Dave S- and Shecky's yes? Groovy... No. Dave and... No. Uh, it's a Groovy... Mm. No. Middle-aged cool kids. Cool middle-aged kids. Middle-aged cool kids. Featuring Dave and Shecky. Super cool okay. something or other. Welcome to... I, I never know what it's called. <laughs> Welcome to the Middle Aged Cool Kids Super Terrific Podcast featuring your pals, Dave and Shecky. That's right. Now, we have... Uh, I didn't know you wanted to talk about the new Gong Show. Oh, yeah. It's really... It's big on my uh, list of priorities. Well, you just brought it up. I'm just saying. It's big on my list of priorities. Oh, you're not being facetious. No. All right. It is big on his list of priorities. Well, that's fine. Uh, Yesterday, we discussed that today's show was going to be about unpopular opinions. And the uh, most unpopular of opinions is that the Gong Show is a vital uh, TV show. Yeah. We don't have cable at all. We have no cable. Well, that's Um, that's a popular trend. Yeah, we're, well, we're cord cutters. Um, we're cool kids. No. I got a man bun. <laughs> there are no men buns. In the buns. oven. You don't have a man bun. We, uh, you know, we just I had lived... a man bun once. You did? Yeah, back in the 90s. I think that was a ponytail. It's a ponytail until you think you're Gene Simmons and you put it above your head. Then all of a sudden, he's the originator of the man bun. You know what? You're onto something there. <laughs> Gene Simmons, innovator, man bun. Let's see if he copyrights the term because he's kind of that guy. Next thing, these hipsters are going to be spitting blood. <laughs> oh, wait, they are. That way you hear that guy on the airplane. He was spitting blood. That guy was a weirdo. He must have been ahead of his time. How did he, uh, how did he, what did he do? Bite the inside of his cheek or something? Well, like, I don't, I don't know. How do you just... he's, he's got a blood capsule in there. So it's fake ketchup or something. Is fake ketchup real blood? Ketchup is no, real it's not. Blood. Yeah, because anyway. they use ketchup instead of blood sometimes in the, in the movie scenes. Yeah, I, I think we're talking real low budget movies. <laughs> yeah, you know the movie scenes, the Super Eight movie scenes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, the Gong Show with <clears throat> so we started watching it through one of our Plex channels. I think it, uh, some Plex had some sort of chan- ABC. I guess it was on. And we just started watching it. We knew nothing about it. Uh, this was, a, a, I guess, about six months ago. 
and it had already aired in its entirety and, and we just hadn't even heard anything about it and we're watching it and we're like who is that host and I think pretty quick I was like I think that's Michael Myers I had no idea I just thought he was some sort of really strange English like caveman guy but um, but amazing it was amazing well he had a certain flair charm that I wasn't sure what was going on with him the character of him I don't even remember his name but the character was so amazing it was just like I didn't even care about the acts or the judges I just couldn't get enough of that guy and then I think maybe the second episode in, I'm like, I think that's Mike Myers. And then I couldn't not think it. <laughs> and you thought I was was wrong, didn't you? Uh, I didn't know. I, or you were open. You I, were open to uh, any new ideas. I don't know about that. But once I saw it, I kind of realized it was probably Mike Myers. And then we started Googling. He had a little bit of the Scottish look to him, like from the uh, So I Married an Axe Murder. There was a little, if you look, kind of like if the Scottish character had, had aged a little bit or something. Scottish I'm not sure which character. Scottish character I th- I'm talking think he, about, but maybe I'm confusing a couple of things. The Scottish character in... Not, not from... Uh, Austin Powers? No. In My no. Belly? No, maybe more like his... Uh, the dad? The dad or something. The dad from So I Married Anna. Kid, heed, now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that was sort of... There was something There was something about there. that? Yeah, okay. And anyway, so they, they've renewed it. There was no word on whether they were going to renew it. And I... I even followed the, uh, I forget what Mike Myers' character name is on Gong Show, but I even, I followed that Twitter. Yeah, we weren't really prepared to talk about this. I just kind of... I wasn't, but I do... I just thought about it for a second there. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for throwing me a curve, Dave. Now, of course, yeah, yeah. the big news of... Off the, the cuff. Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's, you know, uh, we could segue in here if you want. Oh, okay. You go ahead and segue. Yeah. Uh, this is, you know, so they're bringing it back, uh-huh. unless he tweets some sort of racist uh-huh. nonsense, which leads us to the next topic again. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that apparently uh, the network and, and then affiliates who carry the old programs of Roseanne just couldn't wait to not only cancel, but then, uh, you know, tell everybody how they canceled Roseanne. And uh, Roseanne wasn't being racist. She, in fact, thought Valerie Jarrett was a white woman. So it was like, it's almost like it turns it around. And everybody who's screaming that she's a racist, they're really the racist because they assumed that it was a racist statement. And it wasn't. She, she, she thought she was a white person. Valerie Jarrett is in fact i believe iranian so it's not even like she's a black american like i you know what i mean i i don't understand the the quickness with which abc ran to cancel the show and then all these other like paramount all these other distributors were like well we're pulling it off all of the reruns so she doesn't make any money because she said the woman looked like the chick monkey from the marky mark version of uh, Planet of the Apes, the really bad remake from like 2000 or 99 or whatever. And quite frankly, you know what? She does. So, I mean, you... We all know what that means. What the, No, it's, that's not true. But what the left is saying is, if you compare someone to a monkey, you're racist. So then there's all these, you know, uh, it's all this footage of like, Uh, Wanda Sykes and other people involved in that show comparing Trump to a monkey comparing your girlfriend Aaron Burnett who has the world's worst profile in the news business what about uh, also compared a George Bush to a monkey on MSNBC back in the day what about Ron Perlman you're gonna tell me he doesn't look a little bit like a monkey Ron Perlman yeah isn't that the person we're talking about uh, the, oh, the uh, Beauty and the Beast, Hellboy. Yeah, if that man looks like a monkey. I never... You're going to tell me that Louise Guzman does not have monkey-like qualities? Louise Guzman. Who's that? Is he one of the... From Entourage? No, he's uh, from... Uh, he's the classic Puerto Rican actor from the Lower East Side. I was going to say, you know he who looks like in, uh, one of those like little monkeys from like Friends? He was in... Uh, what's that movie? Pache- uh, Carlito's Way. Uh, I didn't say Carlito's Way. Uh... You know the monkey from Friends? Maurice? Was Maurice! It? Is that his name? Yes. You know who looks like him? I don't. 
my least favorite actor in the world. John Leguizamo. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell me why you say his name is Leguizamo? Leguizamo. It's like... Let me tell you, John Leguizamo, stand-up performance in that movie we saw the other day. In what movie Best was... performance I ever seen oh, him give. Oh, gosh. What was that movie called again? Incident on 7th Street. Incident on 7th Street. Uh, another curveball, but that was that was a movie that was... Uh, it's a, clearly an indie film. It stars... Uh, it's Anakin Scar- Skywalker, right? Uh, yeah, it did, actually. Anakin Skywalker... Uh, Wait, what's his name again? Hayden Christensen. Yes. Uh, John Leguizamo. Who else was in it? I feel like somebody else famous was in there. Uh, oh, oh, Maeve from... Uh, uh, yeah, the chick from uh, Westworld. Is her name Tandy or Thandy? Newton. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes the H is silent, sometimes not so much. So, But she was Thandy. in it. Incident Thandy. at what? Thandy. Wasn't that the name of uh, Will Forte's character in uh, Last Man Standing? Thandy? Last Man on Earth? Thandy? Tandy? Tandy. He has like some sort of alternate name. Tandy? Thandy? Something like that. <laughs> it is a curveball podcast. Yeah, it's this is not the popular, uh, unpopular Remember the time podcast. we were in Georgia at that rest stop and I got peanuts? I don't. I was going to say, I do not recall that at all. <laughs> I remember the first time we drove saying, down. Wouldn't to, that be another curveball? I remember the first time we drove down to Florida. You figured out that the back seats flipped open and revealed the trunk. And so when we went and parked at Disneyland, hey, take it easy. We parked at Disneyland, and he was like, "One second. And he he crawled into the back seat, put down the back seats, crawled into the trunk, and did a few bong hits. <laughs> Before we went into the park. Well, yeah, you know, you gotta be prepared. That was we had only been dating for maybe five months. It was a homemade months. bong, too, by the way. I think that was made out of a plastic uh, quart water bottle. Yeah. All I know is we had been dating for five months. You had been pretty much on your best behavior for those first five months, and then for the next twenty some odd years, maybe. you've been. That fiendish guy in the in the trunk of the car. Well, I, how's that for a curveball? I got no comment. <laughs> you cannot confirm nor deny. So, what do you think about the Roseanne thing? Uh, uh, Especially now that you know that Valerie Jarrett is in fact not a black woman, and that in fact Roseanne says she didn't. She she thought she was a white lady. I don't think that should matter. God forbid you call a black person looking like Planet of the Apes. What? So what? What? So what? I'll say it again. So what? You said when you were little, people used to say you look like a Muppet. Yeah, and I'm a Jew. I've got plenty of Jew hatred in the past. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> okay. Don't make me talk about Ginger Baker again. Oh, geez. Jesus Please, let's fucking not... Christ. Let's not talk about Ginger Baker. Uh, first oh, of all, okay, look, <laughs> as far as I can tell you, mm-hmm. Roseanne's show wasn't very good. <gasps> what the fuck are you uh, saying? Even the first, the first, I didn't ever, I didn't ever like the first one. You think you're going to hurt just Roseanne by canceling that? What? What did John Goodman treat this tweet? Uh, uh, what's he going to do? Are you going to pay his contract out? Oh, I bet they are. Then who are you spiting? Yourselves. You're That's paying true. for nothing then. I believe in order for them to the not fuck? look terrible, they are going to pay everybody for the next season. Then what are they paying for? They should pay Roseanne, too. They're going to pay her? Oh, I'm sure they have to. Then they're the fools. The show, was, you know, they were looking for an easy out. I think they were, but why would you look for an easy out when the show is your number one show? Because it's going to be, it's number one now, and next it's going to go slowly down and not continue to be number one. Do you think another network will pick it up? No. All right. I do not. Okay. How about the reboot of Charlie Sheen? You think that's going to happen? Did you see that today? I did. I bet that'll happen. Yeah. Well, you know what? I've got two words for Charlie Sheen, and it's Corey Haim. So if we're going to cancel Roseanne over a tweet that was misunderstood and 
<laughs> I mean, it well, was welcome a, to the world of double standards. Yeah, but we're gonna okay over a tweet that was a joke that was immediately slammed as racist when in fact it really wasn't. And then we're gonna have Charlie Sheen come back, two and a half men. The problem is who's been accused America, of so many horrible uh, things. America likes Charlie Sheen, and they don't like Roseanne. I don't know why, but Roseanne rubs people the wrong way. Look at I. This is this is what I'm saying. Roseanne sends out a tweet that people misunderstood and they all jump on a bandwagon and, you know, get their torches and their pitchforks out before she has a a chance to even say anything. Or you have Meryl Streep giving a standing ovation to child ass rapist Roman Polanski at the Oscars without a care. Just... Everyone knows he's a child ass rapist, and she's still fucking giving him a standing ovation. Woody Allen is still allowed to go and make movies. Charlie Sheen has has tweeted a fucking picture yeah. of a script when he's, you know, a, a, at least questionable. The guy who also child raped somebody, uh, De Silva, or Silva, the the, the uh, lizard Victor King? Victor De Silva, Victor Silva. Oh. He's a director. He directed uh, those movies with the uh, scarecrows in the in the. I've heard about him. Justin Long was in in one of his movies, one of those movies. I forget what their names are, but then he got accused of ass rapage. How and do you guess think what? he got his name, Justin Long? And then he, uh, or maybe not, I, whatever it was, molestation. I don't want to downplay it, but it was molestation of some sort yeah. and then he was directing powder and then he's directing this and that no one gives a shit fucking Roseanne tweets about Valerie Jarrett and it, all hell is broken loose and this is what is the problem with, with me with the left they are just so hypocritical they are so chicken little the sky is falling and they just I, I can't I can't imagine being proud to say I'm part of that group. Well, I hear that. All right, then. (laughs) You had an unpopular opinion the other day about a drummer. Oh, geez. Here we go. It was, I, I don't know if you want to name names. Well, I don't know, but what does it matter? Well, do you think it's going to keep you from getting gigs in the future? What gigs am I getting? I'm not getting any gigs. Well, what if all of a sudden you got a gig and then they they said, oh, but in this podcast, he talked bad about this drummer. Oh, well, that's fine. (laughs) I'm not talking bad about him. No, you're just saying you don't think he's a good fit for the band he's in right now. I absolutely think that's true. And because of what? I just don't think Sonny Emery sounds good with Eric Clapton. That's all. Now, Sonny Emery is a drummer, a famous drummer. Right? Sonny Emery's a, a brilliant drummer who's been around for ages, uh, who's got the respect of everyone in his peer group and other world-class drummers. As well as yours. Uh, I like him in certain things, but I've got it, uh, the most recent stuff I heard him do, I don't like. And that's just my opinion. And but why is that? I need because you were explained it to me very. Because he overplays the. He plays like an athlete. He plays very aggressively. He hits very hard. He's an overpower. And he's not meshing. He doesn't serve well. the music. Right. And uh, I seem to be the only person who thinks this. Now he's currently playing with. He's playing with Clapton. With Eric Clapton and. Dave takes music very seriously. Look, compare Steve Gadd to Sonny Emery. They're polar opposites. And Steve Gadd was a perfect fit for Clapton. Sonny Emery is not. It's not. He's Sonny Emery would be a better fit for Jeff Beck. See. Much better fit for Jeff Beck. For someone like Dave. Sonny Emery with <laughs> Eric Clapton. For someone like Dave, music <clears throat> is not just music. It's also a... a a language, a real language, and he listens to music in a way I do not listen. I listen if it's pleasing, then I'm like, okay, I'll go with it. But he's, you know, dissecting it in his head and and pulling it apart and listening to it for different things. And 
You know who sounds good with Eric Clapton? Who? Andy Newmark. Andy Newmark. I believe we and, spoke about him last week. And Andy week. Newmark played like one gig with Clapton and then lost the gig. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think Clapton liked him very much, but I tell you, you listen to those recordings, and that's what Clapton needed, someone right in the pocket with a, with a laid-back feel. See, there you go. Maybe Andy Newmark was just too darn good looking well, for Clapton. I don't Clapton. know what was happening there. I don't know what happened. Or something was happening. There's something about really good looking guys joining the band. Um, you know, back in the day when Russ Irwin joined uh, Aerosmith. That's, that's not good looking. Dude, that's he just, was that's, too good looking for that band and they hid four, him. They're a four piece band. They couldn't have a fifth member on stage. Why? Rolling Stones has other members on stage. Because they've always had other members on stage. The Beatles would never have another member on stage. If they do, he was off the side of stage. Am I mistaken? Was Billy Preston on stage with the Beatles? I don't... You know more about the Beatles than me. Maybe he was. I don't know. I'm just saying that I feel like at times lead... The band leaders get a little bit... They get a little standoffish when somebody really good looking is on the scene. They want that attention. It's possible. I've I've seen it. It's possible. All right. I've seen it in action. That's all I'll say. So, but you also said yesterday that Sonny Emery was great in what, what band? Sonny Emery was great in uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire back in the 80s. So you're not saying you think he's shitty. You're saying... No, he's a great drummer. You don't think he's a match for Eric Clapton? I don't think he's a match for Jeff Lorber. I don't think he's a match for Eric Clapton. Other than that... Who's Jeff Lorber? He's a keyboard player. Oh, for Eric Clapton? No. Oh. For uh, inventing smooth jazz, basically. He he, did, uh, he... Jeff Lorber... Uh, well, let me put it this way. Mm-hmm. Without Jeff Lorber, there might not have been Kenny G. And that is not a good thing, but unfortunately, Kenny G was in Jeff Lorber's band. Before he was Kenny G, he was Kenny Gorlick. I see. And did, did Sonny Emery, in fact, play with Jeff Lorber? Yeah. I oh, play okay. with Jeff Lorber. I don't know if you were just throwing So did Andy Newmark. I guess who sounds better? Andy, Andy Newmark. fucking Newmark. All right, relax. You're you're big on Andy Newmark for two weeks in a row now. Andy Newmark doesn't have chops at all. The bug, he can barely make it around the fucking drum set at this point. But he plays his ass off in terms of feel. And that's what you need. You need someone with feel, not someone who's got... Look, don't get me started. I'm getting you started. It's gospel chops, all right? Gospel. Okay. But let's, you know... Take it outside of the church for a second. It's not all about the chops. What's the difference between chops and feel, I guess? Uh, Charlie Watts and Buddy Rich. Charlie Watts's chops? No, oh, Charlie Watts's feel. Okay, I have no idea. I have no idea, but what is, you know... Chops is what you build up. You build up your chops. You got your acting chops, you got your musical chops, you know... Somebody once told me I have writing chops. You you shed and build up your chops. Okay, so it means you're good. It means you have technical ability. Oh, okay. So, okay. All right. So I have technical ability if I have chops. Yes. But the feel is... Feel is the most important thing. There's some Ray Charles records that just have a a beat on the two and four. There's nothing else. It's the whole record, and those are pop hits. It's not. It's not just about how many you know licks you could get in there. I mean, Sonny Emery's not just doing that, but he sounded pretty good with Steely Dan. He played with Steely Dan too. He sounded all right with them. On in the studio or live? Uh, he's probably. I don't know about live. He's like he's on a studio, some studio stuff. Oh, really? Is he no Bernard Purdy? No, man, they're opposites. So Bernard Purdy is all feel. Oh, all feel. But all he's got feel. great chops too. I mean, it's not like he's amateur. His Bernard, chops don't get in the way of his feel. His chops serve the music. I the, see. The, 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 uh, some people their chops get in the way of the feel. Sonny Emery's a great drummer. He's just too aggressive, I think, for Eric Clapton. All Let's right. put it at that for now. But you loved him with Earth, Wind, and Fire. He was good with Earth, Wind, and Fire. Because that was a... But I think the original drummer for Earth, Wind, and Fire is, was what? Uh, was one of the White Brothers? For, uh, wait, what's her name? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, 
the original guy from Earth, Wind, and Fire, I think was the bass player's brother or someone's oh, brother. See. Anyway, he was better. So, uh, Bernard Purdy, top 20? Yeah, he's pretty much, yeah, definitely. Sonny Bernard Emerson? Purdy's one of the best drummers ever. Sonny Emerson? Sonny Emery. Emery? <laughs> Sonny Emery makes me bored. No, Sonny just... Emery bored oh, of okay. him. Not the top 20 is what I'm saying. No, but he's, you know, Sonny Emery's an amazing drummer. My, but know, not these. Not my cup of tea. Not your cup of tea, especially with Clapton. Yeah, and don't get me started on Clapton. I mean, Clapton in his own right sucks. Fucking the Clapton nostalgia show. That's um, great, wonderful. Dave is angry that uh, Eric Clapton is just seems to be out there doing best of shows and not really singing new stuff. We're not even just playing some blues and really playing. Uh, it's just there's no jamming. It's just record hits. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. It's okay. It's all right. I mean, his playing is great. His playing's still good. Mm-hmm. But you just you just feel like there's no innovation going it's on. It's sterile. It's, it's sterile. But that's what the people want. They want sterile. They don't want anything different than the before. They want to hear what's on the record so they can remember what they felt when they heard that record. 20, 30 years, 40 years ago. So that's fine. I mean, you know, I have my experience with a band like that as well. And that is they uh, that is what they they do. Yep. They make their money. Um, they know that they've become a nostalgia act for, uh, you know, most of the audience. And uh, they play the, you know, the hits. So Zappa at the pier, God damn it, he opened the show with a fucking 15 minute guitar solo. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but, you know. It was like the Grateful Dead, only they know how to fucking play. All right. No, you... I mean, the jamming was like the Dead, only they actually know how to play. I thought you liked the Dead. I did, yeah. The, act, the vocal harmonies were actually in tune. Other than that, it was like the Dead. You... It was like the Dead, except there wasn't some fucking freak named Bob Weir fucking up the goddamn harmonies. You think Bob Weir is the culprit of the harmonies? Yeah, him and uh, Phil Lesh and uh, Donna McKechnie or whatever the fuck her name is. Donna, no, that's a uh, actor. Something Donna. Uh, Pashow? Just Donna. Pashow? Pashow? Godshaw. Godshaw. Donna Godshaw, you know, was on every Motown hit and there was in the fucking early 60s. And then what happened? I don't know. Was she, I don't know why she's had a tune with Jerry. Was she a background singer? Yeah. Percy Sledge, all these people. Really? Yeah, surprising. But she was out of tune live. She she's, probably just couldn't hear herself. <clears throat> she's definitely out of tune sometimes. I mean, there's no, there was no ear in in ear monitors back then, was there? No, but I never heard Sarah Vaughn out of tune. I never well, heard Ella Fitzgerald out of tune. Yeah, but were they trying to harmonize with someone? No, but they're playing over a big band, and they were. I hear that, they but were true musicians. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses for. Donna Godshaw. Godsh what was it? It had to been the drugs. It must have been the drugs. I don't know if it's the drugs, but like if you watch like the Andrew Sisters mm -hmm. and they're playing with a big band, they're standing right next to each other. I feel like That's true. I feel like that's that's a key thing, and I'm sure Donna's trying to harmonize, can't hear shit. And uh Yeah, you Jerry's know what you can't blame it away. on Donna. What? The whole band was out of control. I mean, how are you gonna fucking sing in tune over a, a cacophony? Yeah. Not always, but occasionally, yeah, it would get lost. Those those jams got a little weird. Yeah, it's just all weird. How many times did you see The Dead? You think? Uh, I think I saw The Dead like eleven times, maybe. Oh, okay. Uh between eighty one and eighty five, and then I stopped. Then you stopped because uh, you fell out of love. I was disenchanted with the scene, man. I would say I saw The Dead. I'm going to say between 20 and 25 times. You know. Between 89 and 96. Holy cow. Yeah. I was going a, a lot. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of people went a lot. I liked them at first. What what made you not like them? Uh, was there like a moment in time where you were like, yeah, I was in uh, Hartford outside of uh, of the concert trying to get in. For some reason, I didn't have a ticket. You were looking for a miracle, Dave? I was just... Maybe I did have a ticket. 
maybe I, I can't even remember now. I just remember uh, experiencing. I don't know. It's just like all these like whack, like fake hippies, like oh, trying to profit, like tricksters. selling shit, like selling tickets for way over the price and mm-hmm. like bad shirts and drugs and sandwiches. And it was just all fucking bullshit. It was a bunch of bullshit. And then guards killing people that were trying to break in. I was at Brendan Byrne a few months before that kid died. And I witnessed fucking, it was like some sort of army siege, like... Um, I think the hippies had walkie-talkies, and they were like, you know, forming like, you know. Are you serious? Yeah, it was like it was like it was a mission. Like, you know, hundreds of people would breach a door, and you know, then a hundred people more would come. It was like, jeez, it was fucked up, man. There's no, it's, it's, it's no wonder that the guards felt overpowered and they they got out of control. Fucking insane. What year was that? The eighty-five. Wow. These kids are it's just rich kids with credit cards pretending they're hippies. And it's just like, you know, fuck, go fuck yourself. Once again, go so fuck yourself. The the, the liars and, and cheats. That was then. Can you imagine what the kids like watching fish are? I don't, Can you imagine I, fish, fish, fish parking lot? Uh, it was bad in 85. I'm sure it was bad in 65. Fucking, ugh. It's fucking losers. I can't. I've never been to a fish show. I'm not. I was not. I've been to a fish show. Yeah. I was fucking playing the goddamn thing. All right. The only oh, fish show I went to, I fucking opened for fish, and that's it. What band was that with? That yeah, was with another band. I'm not gonna mention. Oh. That was a band though. We we played. We opened for fish. What band was that? What? What band? I'm not telling. <laughs> I don't need people knowing who I am. Dave, they know who I am, so they know. That's who fine. You are. I'm not saying what band it was. Was it? Did it start with a D? No. Start with an F? It started with a... I'm not telling. Oh, okay. Point is, <laughs> I opened for fish around trampolines and wearing dresses. You you wore a dress? They did. Oh, okay. I was just saying, was that in I some sort of a cannot... moo. All right. And they had trampolines. That's all I remember. This is 1991. So this was... Uh... So th- they were not very big in 91. They were pretty big. Oh, they were? Yeah, they were selling out uh, about 500, 600-seat play. I mean, yeah, they weren't huge. They were they were selling out places that were like 1,000 seats, I think. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. All right. They weren't uh, stadium arenas. This is pre-internet. Yeah, yeah. They had cultivated their uh, huge, huge mailing list. Oh, from where huge... were they? Vermont? Yeah, Burlington. They had a core oh. bunch of people that somehow got them where they are. They they had a big team effort there, and they organized and you know, fish did something that most people will never ever be able to do, other than them sucking. Yeah, I was never a fan. I don't. I can't tell you a song by them. Yeah, you know, the thing is, Trey is a great guitar player. I think, uh-huh. and I think the drummer's a good drummer. The other guys are adequate, but the singing is just. It's bad, and the song content lyrics are just like, I don't know who relates to that shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know either, but it was never me. In the ninety, in the early nineties, I was uh, from eighty nine till, I guess until we got married, I was uh, all in with Blues Traveler. Like I hadn't even, I didn't even hear of Fish. I was just all in with Blues Traveler. Yeah, Fish and Spin was, Doctors, uh, Spin Doctors too, because they played Fish a lot. Fish was together. touring, I guess. They weren't really in New York City that much at that point. Who Fish? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a, a, a Vermont connection, so is that why you were up there so much, or like, how did you get that gig, or did someone else in the band get it? Oh, we uh, were managed by people. We, that wasn't in Vermont. That was in uh, Connecticut. I see. That was at the uh, the Sting. The Sting. Which was a uh, old roller rink that had been converted into a uh, venue. Oh wow! It was connected to a uh, uh, a strip bar. <laughs> the dressing room. Oh no. Was part of the strip bar. 
Was it was a shared dressing room? You go no, oh, not okay. shared. The dressing room opened up, and you walk into the back of the dressing room, and you were peering down over the bar. Oh, it was like a balcony. A balcony peering down over the strippers. <laughs> well, I guess it could have been worse, huh? It was worse when I saw Popper looking over the balcony down at the strippers. Oh, you were with Popper too? Uh, yeah, we played there a couple times. We opened for Fish, and we also opened for a Traveler there. Okay, well, Popper was the like, he's a Popper red-blooded and our, American boy. Popper and our bass player with their tongues out looking over the balcony. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Well, you know, pretty girls get uh, the Popper, attention Popper of Popper must men. have been 400 pounds, and so was our bass player at that point. It was a sight for sore eyes. Oh, my God, Popper. Oh, and the even more sore sight was that uh, my brother came to see me there with his seven-year-old kid or something. Well, that's... And we walk, he walks into the dressing room. He's like, okay... Not for kids. I mean, you know. Yeah, that was the sting. That's, That's a not unique the, experience. That's not your fault. I, New Britain, England. Uh, New Britain, Connecticut. New Britain. How was the town? I don't know. I didn't make it out of the parking lot. Why would you? There was strippers there. Um. So. The, you played with Popper at the sting, and you played with. I didn't Fish play with the them. They, they we opened for them. Open for that's what I you know. I'm not saying that you got on stage and jammed with them, but that's the venue you played with both of those guys. Yeah, we played. We opened for uh, Archangels there too. Now that I'm thinking of it, Archangels. Archangels was Charlie Sexton. Charlie, the guitar player. Sexton, the guitar player. With Chris Layton. The drummer uh, and bass player, whatever his name is, for Double Trouble from Steve Ray Vaughan. Oh. It was those two guys with Charlie Sexton and Doyle Bramhall II, who is the guitar player uh, in Clapton's band now. Wow. Also played with Roger Waters. Amazing, amazing guitar player. And it was called Archangel? And did they sing mostly covers of each other's bands and stuff? Uh, I don't remember what they played. I I don't remember. I don't remember what they played. It was pretty good. What was your favorite band to open for? Oh, I don't know. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Not the Allman Brothers? Never actually opened for the Allman Brothers. You didn't open for the Allman Brothers at Wetlands? No, we played with the Allman Brothers at Wetlands, but no, we never opened for them. What is, what is, okay, what does that mean? Opening would be, you'd be the opening act. You play and then they play after you. Okay, so what did you play? We just played at Wetlands and... uh, And they played after? No, they played with us. We just played the whole night with uh, the Allman Brothers, except Dickie wasn't there and the uh, drummers weren't there. And that wasn't fun? Well, yeah, that was the, that was fun, but well, well, we didn't open for them. Okay. Okay, literal Dave. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, we opened for, uh, for the, you know, we opened for uh, America. How was that? It was amusing. Why was it amusing? I don't know. It was amusing to hear them play uh, after us. They did all their hits. Venture Highway. That's a good one. And they did, uh, you know, Horse With No Name. That's a good one, too. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you know. They have some hits. Oh, oh, I'll tell you, one funny thing was opening for uh, Steppenwolf. Where was that? The Steel Mill in Pittsburgh. Okay. We had to play the whole night because... They didn't show up? No, they showed up, but um, Steppenwolf wasn't using a bass player, and they had all their bass parts sequenced on a computer oh, no. and the computer wouldn't work oh my so god so they couldn't play they just never got it together and we played the whole night did you play a steppenwolf wait, song wait no that was at the chestnut cabaret i think i think that might have been at the chestnut cabaret in philadelphia did you open for them more than once yeah yeah we were kind of like on a mini tour with them oh that's cool yeah it was like uh what's that cat's name again the leader of steppenwolf it was him with some kids basically it was, I see it wasn't the old it wasn't school. really Steppenwolf gotcha. but he called it Steppenwolf and uh, he had leather pants well, and a harmonica he had leather pants and a harmonica but yeah the uh, drummer would uh, pretend to count the song off with his sticks clicking but uh-huh. he wouldn't actually hit them together it was all on him it was uh, he would 
put them in the air, pretending to go one, two, three, four, and that was stick noise coming out of the uh, speakers. Oh wow! So everything was so everything you, was that it was all clocked out, mapped did, out. Bass did he parts. play real drums at all? Oh yeah, yeah. He played real drums to a click that he probably had in his headphones, and he also had the sequence bass part probably in his headphones, and everyone else probably just had it through their monitors. So there was a bass player, but he really wasn't playing? No bass player, just... Just the parts? Just the parts. I think there might have been a keyboard player, but he wasn't playing the bass parts. Weird. Yeah. Amateur hour. Well, I mean, you know. We opened for Johnny Winter there, too. That was good. Oh, I bet. That was one of the better ones. I mean, I'm just talking about in terms of, like, artists. As opposed to... I don't know. Oh. We opened for Chuck Brown. That was good. Chuck Brown. The Godfather of Go Go. The Godfather of Go Go? Yeah. Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers. Are you kidding? Nope. He's passed away, but he was a DC legend. The Godfather of Go Go. Uh huh. That's amazing. I didn't know there was a Godfather of Go Go. Oh, yeah. Chuck Brown. Chuck Brown. <laughs> Apparently, Chuck Brown is the Godfather of Go Go. His drummer went on to play with uh, Miles Davis. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Which takes me to the next issue. Oh. I was watching a video of Miles in 73. Okay. And he's playing, and all of a sudden he gets up and he starts yelling at his drummer. Oh, boy. And he's freaking out on him. And then... Uh, in front of the crowd. Oh, yeah. He's turned his back, but he's like, he's like, motherfucker, what the... You know, you can tell he's just like... Oh, he's shit. Like, was he fucker? rushing? No, he was playing... He wasn't rushing. He was playing f- slow, fast... In between. Oh, he wasn't He was playing time. like a free lunatic, and Miles was like, fucking groove, motherfucker. <laughs> groove? Yeah, you could tell he was like, in the pocket, groove. And then he gets it, and then uh, he loses it again, and <gasps> Miles is like, motherfucker, I told you. And then he gets it again. Who was the drummer? And then he goes over uh, Al Foster, great, great drummer. And then he goes over to the percussion player, and the percussion player is like doing his thing, you know, trying to have a happy face. And Miles is like, yeah. And he points at the drummer, and he's like, yeah, you guys are locked in. And then, then he goes back and does his thing. That's hysterical. <laughs> yep. He couldn't get. He just couldn't get his shit together. I don't know what he was thinking, but Miles was like, "Motherfucker, what the fuck?" He wasn't having it. You could see it. He's just like, he's like, "I told you, I told you, I told." He's like, "Motherfucker, I told you." Maybe it's we'll so have funny. to link to that video. You have to send me a link so I can put it in our. The whole band sounds like shit, but I mean, uh, I guess he wasn't happy with the drummer. Yeah. Uh, 73 miles is a very uh, out sort of loose thing. Is it? Yeah, it's very, very free. I guess it was a little too free, I guess. Yeah, for Miles' taste at that very second. Yeah. It's fucking hysterical. I just don't, I just don't know when you ha- when you're, when someone is screaming at you like that, I do I don't know how you can just pull it together and then perform. I, I'm so busy being mortified and frightened and scared that I don't know that I would be like, okay, now I'm going to play perfectly. It's funny when you're on stage with someone who's having an imaginary battle with you that you don't even know exists. Yes. And then all of a sudden they yell at you. Not me, but I've heard this, you know, uh, classic thing, you know, they yell at you like, you want a motherfucker? You got it. Take it, motherfucker. You got it, motherfucker. That's our sax player friend has yelled that at people on stage. Oh, God. And it's just like, it's all happening in his head. Like, nothing has happened except maybe, like, he thinks the guy's maybe stepping on a solo, perhaps. <laughs> so, like, it's just, like, from zero to 60 in two seconds. And before you know it, like, you're getting yelled at on stage. <laughs> and, the person, and, the, and the poor person has no idea it's coming. Pretty much. Unless you've worked with him a lot. And then you know it might be coming just because he's out of his mind, but yeah, not that, because you've done anything. If you've anything. worked with him a lot, then it's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe some people work with him just for the the lulls, as the kids <laughs> like to say. Oh, man. But this, is, this brings me to Whiplash. The other day, um, we were sitting in the living room, and Dave was on his phone, and I was like, let me put in a movie that perhaps... We can watch together as a family. <laughs> so I put on Whiplash because we've both nev- never seen it. And I know it's about drums and a drummer. So I f- think, okay, my husband is going to like this movie. We put it, I put it on, it starts, and you, you just, you got a puss on almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you did not like 
Whiplash. As a matter of fact, you didn't finish watching Whiplash. Yeah, it's true. What did what didn't you like? Uh I guess I didn't like uh the cliched love story part of it to start with. That was just it was too much like an after school special for me. You did make that that note while we were watching it. What is this? An after uh, an after school special? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I gotta say, the only thing I thought that was good was, uh, what's his name? J.K. Uh, Simmons? Yeah, he was He was excellent. He was the only good part. He was excellent, but he made me feel very uncomfortable because oh, I, I have... was supposed to. Well, I've worked with someone as crazy as that in the past, and uh, it, was, it really brought me right back to those <laughs> moments, and it was very difficult. Did he win an Oscar for it? I believe he did, yes. Best Supporting Actor. Well, who's the lead actor? I guess the kid. No. Yeah. No, he wasn't. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, he got best supporting, so. Well, that's fine. But he was the he was the star of that movie. I mean, am I wrong? I don't. They do that so weirdly sometimes. Sometimes they, so they, so they guarantee some sort of Oscar nomination or win. They'll drop someone down to best supporting when you're like, what? Uh, any kid who would just sit there and let that guy slap him like that, you know, no, no, I'm not going to be part of your insane trip. No, no, I'm, uh-uh. I'm quitting. I'll go smoke a joint and you can go fuck yourself. You big baby. Go fuck yourself. You weirdo. What, what instrument did that guy even play? I don't, well, we didn't finish watching. Dave right. was just like, I got to go. And he went off to do Dave things somewhere. You want a movie about a drummer? It's called the, uh, the O-Nighters. Oh, the the wonders. Yeah, the Oneontas. The wonders. Now that's a good movie. That thing you do. You like that movie? I do. Why do you like it? Cause if you're gonna make a sappy movie, make a sappy movie and get it over with. Not don't don't have it under the guise of something. Um, I don't know. It was a good movie, but it wasn't. You know, did it win anything? Maybe it did. I don't know. I did, I don't think I've ever watched it all the way through. I liked it. It was good. Right. That you know, that had all the elements of a sappy movie about a musician. Uh, whiplash, eh? And look, is it just, what is this? Every, uh, how come there was no black drummers? You telling me there wasn't a black kid there who couldn't fucking nail those that shit better than that kid? Maybe they thought if J.K. Simmons was yelling at a black kid, it would look shit. racist. There would have been a black kid at that fucking conservatory who would have kicked their ass. There was a black bass player. Why wasn't there a black kid on drums? If there's a black kid, he's going to fucking nail it. He's going to... Look, I hate to tell you this. Uh Uh-oh. But there's there's a lot of black drummers out there who are better than white drummers. There's some good white drummers, but, you know, I'm just saying. Just look look infinite and look famously at the the innovators of, of, of modern music. And they're all black people. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Well, that's fine. Except, what? you know... Oh, uh, Sonny Emery? S- no. Let's no. see. There's the things fall through the cracks. Look, Mike Clark. Yeah. Not a black guy. Not a black guy. Absolute innovator on the drums. Okay. Huge. Steve Gadd, huge. Not okay? a black guy. Okay, yes. But then you can't forget Art Blakey. You can't forget Elvin Jones. You can't forget Max Roach. You can't forget Philly Joe Jones. You can't forget Joe Jones. You can't forget, you know, Roy Haynes. You can't forget Billy Higgins. You can't forget thousands of drummers who just trance upon the kid in, in Whiplash. Yeah, I don't think you were buying the kid in Whiplash. You know, Nate Morton for The Voice. That's a good drummer. You like the drummer for uh, The Voice better than... You like the band for The Voice better than the band for American Idol, right? Yeah, American Idol shit the bed. They must have cut corners on that shit. I don't know, but they gave Colin Kaepernick the bass playing job. And he was the best part of the band. Well, there you go. He's found his second second career. He didn't kneel once the whole time. Do you have a favorite music movie about a musician? Uh... I mean, is is the I wonders? I like the Gene Krupa story. The Gene Krupa story. I also like the uh, buddy. I mean, the uh, Benny Goodman story with Steve Allen. You do. Yeah, that's good too. Are those your two favorites? Uh, I like the man with the golden arm. That's really good. That's a great one. Who's that about? 
Uh, that is uh, Frank Sinatra. Oh. Plays a junkie. Drummer junkie. Oh, okay. It's probably one of the best, in my opinion. Wow, I guess I haven't seen uh, that one. He's got uh, the sidekick there, the helper guy, the classic pipsqueak. Pipsqueak from uh, 12 Angry Men, that guy. Is it the guy I, that... I think it's that guy. Maybe I'm mistaken. I could be confusing myself. I haven't been seen it in a while. When, I, when you say pipsqueak, the only guy I can think of is the guy that was on the New Heart show. It kind of sounds like... Yeah, uh, yeah. Is that the Winnie same the guy? Pooh. Who's the guy? There's a guy in the 12 Angry Men with uh, Henry Fonda. I don't know. Classic pipsqueak. I only think of one guy for the classic pipsqueak. Um, all right. Well, my favorite music movie, and I know you're going to hate it. Xanadu. Eddie and the Cruisers. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought it would Dark be... Dark uh, calling out nothing I thought it was that Rick Smith movie. Ooh, the Rex Smith, sooner or later. That's all, yeah, you know that's what? really appropriate uh, content. Sooner or later is a movie that would never get made now. James at 15, the uh, the adulterous version. Yeah, sooner or later has Rex Smith, I think he's 18 or 19. More like sooner. He's, in, he's dating a 13-year-old only because she has... Made her. She's just told him that she's older. She told him she was eighteen. She's got the chops, babe. She's got the. She's got the eighteen-year-old chops. But uh, yeah, that was a made-for-TV movie. Uh, I have it. I, I own it. I own the books. I'm uh, long been obsessed with Sooner or Later and the the soundtrack of it. What do you like more, Sooner or Later or Somewhere in Time? No, is that the movie? Somewhere in Time with Christopher Reeves and uh, Jane Seymour. Exactly. Because I do, bo- I have both of those posters. Oh, wait, what's the uh, Malcolm McDowell movie? Malcolm McDowell. Stitch in Time? Stitch in Time. He plays... Uh, oh, 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 he plays, no. Uh, uh, the, that's the Jack the, the Ripper one, guy. right? Yeah. Something Time. Time Jack something. the Ripper and uh, what's the guy with the time machine? H.G. Uh, Wells. <laughs> exactly. He plays Wells. He uh, that movie you like a lot more than I have. I don't think I've seen it as much as you have. Yes, I like that one very much. Yeah, I lo- so I I'm gonna have to pick sooner or later if that's the two you're comparing. No, no, I was just trying to remember the name oh. of that one. Uh, I I I love time travel in general, and I really do love Somewhere in Time. Well, there you go. And the the book I've read as well. And, now, uh, oh. what's your favorite Christopher Reeve movie? My favorite Christopher... I know what... You, you're bringing this up only because you have one that's odd, I think. What? You think I'm going to mention Death Trap? Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking. I'm thinking he's just... He doesn't care what my answer is. No, he's just waiting over there. I'm just trying there. to lead you to Death Trap. Okay. No, uh, I'm just kidding. My favorite Christopher Reeve movie, I, I'm going to have to say, is Superman. Even though I love Somewhere in Time. Um, I... I, I feel like I, I love Somewhere in Time not because of him, but Superman I do love because of him. The original Superman is in the uh, second one too? Yeah, he's in, I think, three of them. Superman. Superman. Um, so, Death, what is it, Death Trap? I think it's Death Trap. Why do you like that one so much? Uh, you know, I like, I like classic plays. I see. You know, I think I might have seen that one on Off Broadway. Yeah. Back in the day. Did a relative of yours produce it, or you? Just no, no, no. But we might have seen it. I see. Well, that's nice. Yeah. So the, you just want. Okay. Well, let's forget about Death Trap. Okay. How about Michael Caine in general? Michael Caine in general. Is he a knight? Is he a sir? I don't think he is. Well, he should be. Is he your favorite? No. What, or favorite what? Actor? No, I like him, though. He's great. Is he in your top 20? I don't know about that, but I don't know if I have a top 20 actors. I don't think you do. Michael Caine's great, you know? I think I'm like, I like Malcolm McDowell more if I'm talking about English classic actors. I agree with that. Malcolm McDowell might be my favorite old English actor that I can think of right now. Excellent. Yes. Not Anthony Hopkins. Uh, uh-huh. yeah, we're getting in there, something. Yeah. I mean, I've been watching the uh, second season of Westworld. Ah. 
Um, I forced you to watch the first season. Do you remember anything about it? I do. Okay. Well, Bernard. What? Bernard. Bernard. <laughs> I, uh, I've been watching the second season. Are you, are you interested in watching that? Uh, I might watch it. Is Bernard in it? I don't want to do any spoilers. Bernard, the left-wing fanatic. You love Bernard, though. Yeah, I loved him until he started making some sort of whack-ass speech on TV about, you know, dear Congress, do this or else I'll take a poop in my pants. <laughs> Great, Bernard. Who cares? Oh, man. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, they're really just uh, overly emotional and unhinged, and uh, they don't see that they're acting like children. Terrible. It's, it's kind of weird when you're in a bubble and you don't realize how, how terrible you're acting. Um, and how over, how much overreacting you do, and because we are a capitalist society, the people who uh, who you pay or give money to for their services have to um, nurture that. I guess they have to abide by your ridiculousness, and so then you have things like ABC just being like, oh no, shutting it down. After you know there are videos of Kimmel in blackface and. And Bill Maher saying stuff about people looking like apes and monkeys. It's just like, you know, it's 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 kind of shocking. And I'm I'm not even a Republican. I am a registered independent um, because I just you know I don't agree with everybody all the time. But I have to say the people who aren't acting insane right now are are not on the left. That's true. For the yeah. most part, it's very true. Yeah. Fuckers. I mean, it's just, you know, just angry hate and I don't know. I'm just not, uh, I'm not into it. Bad not news, into- man. What? It's bad news, man. It is bad news. Now, I want to, uh, <clears throat> let's just talk about that movie real quick again. What is it? The incident at what? Incident on 7th Street? 7th Street? Yeah, I like that was a good one. It's a horror movie and it's really well done. Is it horror or thriller? That's a horror movie, I would say. It's a yeah, movie yeah. that you just turn well, on. It's a what? Not horror? It's Schiller? a horror. It's a I don't know what you call that. Well, I will say this. It was uh, an independent scary movie of some sort and uh, I literally couldn't watch it. I had to have my eyes away from the screen because I was getting too scared. Like there would there would be like little things that pop up or whatever, and it would give it would make me feel like really uneasy and disturbed. So what I was just, that movie you were watching with the Black Eyed Kids? The Black Eyed Kids. Oh, The Grudge. Yeah, that was kind of odd too. The Grudge is is one one of those Japanese movies. They do horror in their own crazy way. What's and better, Japanese or Chinese, when it comes to those kind of weird movies? The Chinese movies don't they're not scary. They make like action adventure movies. Oh, okay. And they and also some like uh, Oh, like that drift kind of stuff? No, um no, those are oh, that's those Tokyo. are movies those are movies made with Chinese money, but that's not a Chinese like uh production. Like the the wall with Matt Damon or the Great Wall, I guess whatever it was called was was good. And then there was another Chinese movie I saw. I want to say it was called Mermaid, but I might be wrong. But Who makes uh, the Crouching Dragon movies? That was a Chinese movie. That was an action-adventure Chinese movie. Gotcha. Perfect. And it was beautiful. So Chinese are less spiritual, I mean, less into ghosts than Japanese? <clears throat> I don't know that there are many. Uh, I don't know that they do ghosts. Like, I, I know when you, when, uh, I don't know if it's WoW or Final Fantasy, but there are characters <coughs> that they have to change for the Chinese audience. And I think one of them is ghosts. You can't have a ghost or something. Something similar. Strange. Yeah, so it has to be a different looking character. And also, uh, I think it was Final Fantasy, like some of the um, the prizes or the rewards for certain things are different for the Chinese players. Weird. Yeah, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's interesting. It's weird. They, uh, they have their reasons and... Uh, you know, as long as they're willing to put up money, uh, again, we're a capitalist society, so we're like, okay, you know, 
Mm-hmm. That's where we run on money. Some of us have more of it than others, but. <laughs> All right. So, do you have any parting words? We're going to wrap this uh, uh, episode four up. No, I think it's about it for this one here. Okay. Uh, all right. Anything to plug? No, nothing to plug. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's been a real pleasure, and uh, stay tuned for episode five coming next week. If there's something you guys would like us to talk about, specifically... Keep it to yourselves. Do not keep it to yourself. Let us know, uh, either on Twitter, at Middle Aged Cool, or on our YouTube channel in the comment section. Or you can email us at middleagedcoolkids at gmail.com. Did you know we had a email address? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not uh I'm not surprising you with that. All right then everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Next time. America.